This morning. Last night, fell asleep. This morning. We got that? Good. Next. All right, here we go. It says, I need to go to the toilet to change my shirt and comb my hair. I need to go to the toilet to change my shirt and comb my hair. Sam actually gave this sentence to you, uh, something similar, last semester, and I think it was on the midterm as well. Now, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. He's from England. British people say this quite a bit, and so he's not wrong. But now, we're talking about colloquial language, right? Colloquially, though, kind of sounds a little funny, because I'm from North America. If you are from Canada or the United States, and somebody says, can I go to the toilet? It just sounds funny. It just sounds weird. Because to me, when you say, can I go to the toilet? I have a picture. You just gave me a picture in my head. I have a picture in my head of you on the toilet. This is the toilet. I don't want that picture in my head. You don't want that picture in my head. So please, don't say that. Because every time I hear, can I go to the toilet? I'm like, yeah, sure, go ahead. Have fun. So, and another thing is, is this sentence right here, it says, I need to go to the toilet to change my shirt and comb my hair. You're saying, I need to go to the toilet to change my shirt and comb my hair. And so that's a little bit strange. So please don't say I need to go to the toilet. What should you say? I need to go to the okay, bathroom or restroom. restroom. Bathroom or restroom. Bathroom, restroom. What's the difference between bathroom and restroom? <laughs> a bathroom has a bath. <laughs> a restroom is where you rest. <laughs> uh, I, I see the logic. That's not not exactly it's not exactly wrong. But there is a better logical explanation. First, a bathroom is at a private place. A bathroom is at a private place. It's informal. So if you are at home, or you are at somebody else's home, then you would say, I need to go to the bathroom. <coughs> but if you are at a public place, like um, a, a restaurant or a department store, Lotte Mart, E Mart, Shinsan Zolantan, my favorite, <laughs> then, you are, then you should go to the restroom. A restroom is a public place. A toilet is in a restroom. A toilet is in a bathroom. So please, if you are going or speaking to somebody from North America, save yourself embarrassment and say restroom. Because, gentlemen, for example, if you if you are if if, if you go to Seoul National University and you graduate with a master's in business administration, 
from Seoul National University and you are working for Doosan Construction or Hyundai Construction or uh, Korea's Atomic Energy as whatever uh, department and you are in Texas you have to go to Texas and you are negotiating a billion dollars with a big guy in a cowboy hat <laughs> who, do, who probably doesn't like you anyway because he's from Texas and nobody likes anybody from not from Texas. So, and you're negotiating, it's very serious, and you get up and you say, excuse me, gentlemen, all I need to go to the toilet. They're going to laugh at you. And you don't want that. <coughs> so save yourself the embarrassment. Restroom. Now, if you are in Europe, if you go to Europe, and you say restroom, maybe they don't understand. So then you say bathroom. Then if they don't understand, then you can say toilet. But that's the hierarchy. All right? Again, colloquially, we should try to be as polite and correct as possible. Especially when you're talking about this. Okay? By the way, gentlemen, we have a urinal. You know the long one? That's a urinal. So just somebody asked me, can you throw us the long one? <laughs> so it's called a urinal. <laughs> Finally, we have what means copious. Actually, it should be what does copious mean? What does copious mean? What does copious mean? Or what is the meaning of the word copious? What is the meaning of the word copious? Or what does it mean to take copious notes? What does copious mean? Anybody? Do you guys know? Oh my gosh. You are you you memorize your word smart books and your text books and your TOEFL books and your toy books and your SAT books. Copious means abundant, a lot. So the reason why I have this is because of my father. My father told me this every day before school. Good luck in school, take copious notes. 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 It got really annoying. <laughs> but then when I, when I got to high school and I was like a junior or a senior in high school, sometimes my dad forgot in the morning to say, take copious notes. And I said, Dad, copious notes. Oh yeah, take copious notes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so now I'm telling you, good luck in school, take copious notes. And some of you take very copious notes. Good job. Some of you take very copious notes. You take a lot of notes. That is not very copious. <laughs> Next. Yay. Now, there are two kinds of people in this world actually at this school. Now when you see, oh, this is on page 39. So please turn to page 39. Anyway, there are two people at this school, two kinds of people, who when you look at this page, there are some people who go, oh, yay. <laughs> and there are some people that go, which person are you? I have a question. Here we go. Let's <laughs> practice this. Let's practice tag questions for a second. You people in this row, the first row here, and the people in this row here, and the people in this row here. Look at the person next to you. Say hi. hi. Okay, yeah. Here we go. If you think, if you think they are interested in debate, if you think they are interested in debate, which tag question would you ask them? Then I want you to answer. Then I want you to confirm. Oh, really? And then answer again. Got it? 
Again, if you think they are interested in debate, which tag question would you ask? Go. Okay, good. Let's let's see. Uh, let's just give them, um, ladies. Can you uh, show us exactly what you did? Okay, perfect. So she's again. She said, "You are interested in debate, aren't you?" And then she said, "Yes, I am." Oh, really? So you really are interested in debate? Yes, I am. That's exactly what you're going to do on the midterm. Now let's switch. So now, uh, you people in this row. So you people in this row, this row, and the last row. If you don't think they are interested in debate, which tag question would you ask them? Go. Of course. Good. All right. That was perfect. Go ahead. That's right. No. <laughs> if you don't think he's interested in debate, go ahead. Are you? Yes, I am. So you are interested in debate? Of course I am. Perfect. That's perfect, okay? That's exactly what you're going to do. Now, here we go. Some of you, some of you said no. Some of you said no. And some of you said yes, maybe because that's what you want that's what you, 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 you are trying to please me. <laughs> but I believe a lot of you actually would say no. And I think that's interesting. Because you're saying you don't like to debate. But you debate every day. You really do. You debate every day of your life. Because we are human beings. Human beings are social animals. Social animals get emotional. When we get emotional, we argue. And when we argue, we debate. Also, every time you make a decision, when you make a decision every day of your life, you are debating. A very quick debate with yourself in your head. So you debate every single day. For example, okay, um, should I go to Beijing or should I go to class early? <laughs> well, let's see. I think I might go to Meijo because I'm really hungry. And since I'm really hungry, if I eat something, then I'll be able to go to class and I'll be able to study better. You just had a small debate in your head. Maybe you're talking to your friend together uh, and you are going to study together. And you are trying to decide, should we study for chemistry or study for English conversation? Well, let's see. Um, let's, well, they, the English conversation exam is on Monday, but the chemistry test is on Thursday. My English is pretty good, though, and I don't understand chemistry. So I really think since my English is okay and I'm confident, but my chemistry skills are horrible, I think I need to study for chemistry. So we should study chemistry. You just had a very small debate. You had your opinion. You had reasons. You thought logically. And that's what debate is. So even though, yes, this talks about formal debate, the skills that you learn in, uh, in this book and on these pages, you can actually utilize for any disagreement. Whether you are fighting with your mom or your dad, or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, or your brother or your sister, um, you can use these skills. So, here we go. If I asked you now, what is formal debate? If I asked you, what is debate? Anyway, what would you say? What is debate? Um, conversation with ideas. Conversation with ideas. Perfect. So debate is just a simple conversation with ideas. Okay, what kind of ideas? What kind of ideas? 
Same ideas? No. What kind of ideas? Different ideas. I like to use a different word, though. Let's not use idea. Let's use some another word. Different stances. Let's, oh, now let's use an easier word. <laughs> What's another word for stance? Opinion. Opinion. Good. So we are having a conversation about different opinions. Perfect. That's what a debate is. It's a, it is a, maybe a conversation about different opinions. That's perfect. Now, different opinions about what? About what? About what? Different what? A topic. That's right. And the topic is the resolution. For example, the 7 to 11 system should be abolished at GYFL. <laughs> that is the resolution. So now, from this resolution, we have two different opinions. We have the affirmative opinion, and we have the opposition opinion. The affirmative opinion says, yes, we agree. Yes, we agree with that resolution. Yes, the 7 to 11 system should be abolished. And the opposition team says, no, we disagree with that resolution. The 7 to 11 system should not be abolished. And that's it. So you have two different opinions. But the debate, that's where the debate only begins. You cannot debate opinions and only opinions you have to have reasons. So now the affirmative team, maybe let's change the resolution. Uh, smoking should be banned in public places. Perfect. So the affirmative team would say, smoking should be banned in public places because cigarette smoke uh, causes uh, secondhand smoke, which is harmful for non-smokers. Opposition team says, no, we believe smoking should not be banned in public because smoking is a legal right given to us by the government and by banning such an act would be a violation of our civil rights. So now, are we debating the opinion? What are we debating now? The reason. So now, we are talking about whose reason is better. Is the affirmative reason better, or is the opposition reason better? Which reason is better? So that's what we are arguing. So the affirmative team gives their opinion. We believe smoking should be banned in public because smoking is harm uh, secondhand smoke is harmful for non-smokers, and here's my evidence. And the opposition team says, no, smoking should not be banned in public, because it is a violation of civil rights if it were banned, and here is our evidence. So now, they give their argument. The opposition team gave their argument. Now comes the rebuttal. A rebuttal simply explains why you disagree with the other team. A rebuttal basically says, you are wrong, and here's why. How are they wrong? Maybe, maybe they are not logical. Maybe their argument is not logical. If not, tell them. Maybe it's not specific. Tell them. Maybe it's not clear. Tell them. Maybe it's not convincing. Tell them. Maybe the affirmative side. Maybe they are not logical or specific or clear or convincing. Tell them, but tell them why. Again, that's a rebuttal. A rebuttal says, you are wrong, and here is why. Then, that's, based, that's essentially what a debate is. Now, we were talking about opinions and reasons. So, what is a, what's the difference between a strong reason and a weak reason? Here we go. The difference lies in these three qualities. A strong reason has three qualities. Number one, it logically supports the opinion. Number two, it is specific and clearly stated. And number three, it is convincing not to you, not to me, but to a majority of people. 
Again, logical, specific, clear, convincing. 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 Is that annoying? <laughs> Good. Because you must constantly think about those words every time you are debating, every time you are arguing with your brother or sister or boyfriend or girlfriend or mom or dad, every time you are, every time you are deciding something, you must think about these words, logical, specific, clear, convincing. In a formal debate, everything that comes out of your mouth, you should be thinking, am I logical, specific, clear, convincing? Everything they say, and you're listening closely, you should be thinking, are they logical, specific, clear, convincing? Logical, specific, clear, convincing. In that order. In that order. If you are not logical, then you are not specific or clear or convincing. Maybe you are logical, but maybe you're not specific. If you're not specific, you're not clear and you're not convincing. Maybe you're logical. Maybe you're specific. Maybe you're not clear. If you're not clear, you're not convincing. Maybe you are logical and specific and clear, but maybe you're still not convincing. So you have to be always think about those words, logical, specific, clear, convincing. Now how do we know, how can we tell if a reason or evidence or whatever you are talking about, whatever you are saying, I'm going to start with the reason. How do you know if a reason is logical and specific and clear and convincing? Let's look at it. Again, here's my example. The example says, smoking should be banned in public places. Smoking <coughs> should be banned in public places. Now we have three different <coughs> reasons. A says it is bad. Smoking. Smoking should be banned in public because it is bad. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Obviously, this is not a very strong reason. But we have, to, we have to be able to explain why this is not a good reason. Smoking should be banned in public places because it is bad. All right, well, let's go through our list. Number one, does it logically support the opinion? Yes or no? Smoke. Smoking in public should be banned in public because it is bad. No? Why not? Yes. Yes? No? <laughs> no. Yes. Yes. No. <laughs> well, first of all, we'll come back to logically in a second. Because let's, let's, what word are we looking at? No, no, no. What word, what word are we looking at? Bad, right? So it is bad. What's bad? What's bad? That's my question. What is bad? Is, 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 is smoking bad? Or is smoking in public bad? So this is not even, so right now it's not specific. Because I, I specifically don't know if you're talking about smoking or smoking in public. So, already it's not specific. Now, does it logically support the opinion? I'm going to say no. Because of a very simple reason why. It is bad. Smoking should be banned in public. Why? Because it's bad. Why? <laughs> why is it bad? So if I have to ask why, is that a reason? No, this is not even a reason. What is this? What is this? This is just another opinion. An opinion cannot logically support another opinion. An opinion cannot logically support another opinion. It is bad. It is good. It is beautiful. It is ugly. <laughs> Those are opinions. An opinion is not a reason. An opinion cannot logically support another opinion. Therefore, A cannot logically support the opinion that smoking should be banned in public. 
And since it doesn't logically support it, it's not specific, it's not clear, and therefore it is not convincing. B. Smoking should be banned in public places because it gives people bad breath and makes their teeth yellow. Okay? Smoking should be banned in public because smoking gives you bad breath and it makes your teeth yellow. Okay? Does that logically support your opinion? What do you think? Personally. Per there is no personally. Partially. Partially. Okay, why? That's a, I, I agree with you. I like that word partial. Why? Tell me the partially about yes. Okay, you said partially. Does it logically support the opinion? You said partially. Why partially? Because it is a, I mean, you call it smoking, so, but it's not the whole reason why it should be banned smoking public. Okay. So I like, I, I like the first part of your answer. I love the second part of your answer. But I'm going to stick with the first part of your answer. Let's say that this is logical. Let's just say it's logical, OK? Let's say, well, see, smoking should be banned because smoking um, causes bad breath and gives you yellow teeth. Is that true? Does smoking give you bad breath? Well, OK, now that's, that could be subjective, right? Maybe I. Love the smell. <laughs> so maybe that's subjective. But, however, however, let's think logically, as most people would agree. Most of you, do you, do you, would you agree that smoking causes bad breath? Yes. Okay. Would you agree that smoking causes yellow teeth? Yes. So therefore, I believe that smoking gives you bad breath and smoking gives you yellow teeth. So yes, I believe that is logical. Is it specific and clear? Do you understand bad breath? I mean, honestly, I, I do. I understand bad breath. Smoking causes bad breath. Okay, I understand that. Smoking causes yellow teeth. Do you understand yellow teeth? No? You don't understand yellow teeth? I understand yellow teeth. I really do. In my opinion, I, I, I would say, is this logical? Could be. Is it specific? Yes. Is it clear? Yes. Is it convincing? No. Why? Smoking should be banned in public. Why? Because it causes bad breath and yellow teeth. What are we looking at? What's, what's wrong with this? In this opinion, smoking should be banned in public. Banned in public. What's the strongest word here? Public. Okay, uh, I'd say banned is the strongest, and public is the second strongest word. Banned in public. Banned in public. Banned. The word banned, what does that mean? Prohibited. What? Prohibited. Prohibited. That's right. Prohibited. If something is banned, it is prohibited. If something is prohibited, then it is what? You can't do it. Illegal. So what? Illegal. illegal. It is illegal. If something is banned, it's <laughs> prohibited. If it's prohibited, it's illegal. And if it's illegal, but you do it, what happens to you? Think about it. If something is illegal and you do it, what happens? You get punished. That's right. You get punished. You get punished. Maybe you go to jail. Maybe you have to pay a fine. In Korea, if you smoke near Gwanghwamun, uh, Gyeongbokgung, Sichang, or Kyobo near that area, you have to pay Shipmanwan. So you have to pay a fine. But why? So, here we go. Smoking should be banned. Banned, illegal, prohibited, go to jail, pay a fine. Why? Because it gives you bad breath and it causes yellow teeth. <laughs> Should we go to jail for bad breath and yellow teeth in public? What do you think? Anybody agree? Anybody, anybody, raise your hand. If you agree, let me know. Smoking should be banned in public. 
Because you have bad breath and yellow teeth in public. If you have bad breath and yellow teeth in public and you should go to jail, anybody? No, obviously we think that's kind of ridiculous, right? And so therefore, B is not convincing. And in my opinion, B is not even logical. <laughs> it's not even logical. Next, we have secondhand smoke is harmful for non-smokers. Obviously, we know this is the answer. Obviously, we know this is the answer, but why? Well, we have to explain and we have to think about why this is the right answer. Here we go. Smoking should be banned. Banned. Prohibited. Illegal. Should be prohibited in public. Why? Because in public, smoking causes secondhand smoke. Secondhand smoke is bad. Okay, secondhand smoke is bad. But why is it bad? Because secondhand smoke is harmful. Oh, so it should be prohibited because it's, it's harmful. Harmful to who? Well, harmful to the public. What public? Non-smokers in public. Ah, okay. So smoking should be banned, prohibited, illegal. Why? Because that smoke is harmful. It, it's harmful for other people. And my evidence is an example. Being from Las Vegas, uh, I worked in uh, several casinos. I knew people who worked with me in casinos for 30 years. Some of them have now passed away. They died from lung cancer. So, obviously, they never smoked in their life, but they inhaled secondhand smoke. And so, therefore, that's my evidence. So, I believe this is, this is, um, logical, specific, and clear. But is it convincing? Is this true? Secondhand smoke is harmful for non-smokers? Is that true? Is it? Really? Really? That's true? Does anybody disagree with C? Anybody disagree? You're scared to disagree, aren't you? Just, you just want to go? <laughs> <laughs> Is C true? Is that true? That's true, right? You all agree that C is true. If something is true, then what is that? If a sentence is true, then what is it? Is it an opinion? A what? It's a fact. C is a fact. If it is a fact, it has evidence. And if you can have good evidence for a fact, you are more likely to win your argument. A is an opinion. B is simply not convincing. And C is a fact with evidence. Your homework. Your homework is the next page. It's quite simple though. Your homework, this is the easiest homework assignment you will have all year. All you have to do is write one sentence for each question. Only one sentence. It will take you 10 seconds to write down the sentence. But it will take you at least five minutes to think of a good sentence. Why? Because every reason that you write down should have four qualities. And what are they? Logical, specific, clear, and safe. Good luck on your midterm. Good luck on all of your midterms. I'll see you in two weeks.